Okay, so we're going to learn how to play Pax Premier 2nd Edition on Rally the Troops. Here we have our little games tab on our TT. We see our game highlighted in yellow. This was one that is filled with only me, so there's not much to see here. And so I'm going to be playing three different players here and try to go over how you play it and how you win. So first things first, at the top, sometimes you'll get prompts at the top bar up here for loyalty. So you have one of three loyalties, Afghan, British, or Russian, and you just pick the beginning of the game. It doesn't really matter in most plays what you pick, and you just pick whatever sounds nice and go with that. And then it'll go through and ask each player to pick their loyalty in turn. So Pax Pamir is a game set in Afghanistan quite a long while ago, well, maybe not that long ago, and we see a little map here divided into regions. Let's look at what's going on here. So up here we have a market of cards. You can purchase these cards, I'll go over that later. Here we have a victory point tracker, as one may guess. Whoever has the highest victory points at the end of the game will be declared the winner. Um, and scoring happens at four different points in the game. Well, potentially less. We'll go over that also. Um, when a dominance card is drawn. And these are shuffled into the deck and they will appear in this market. So how does scoring work? As we go through... And after each player in turn has selected their loyalty, and we see we have Russian, British, and Afghani, uh, each player then will, in reverse order, uh, go through and take two actions. Rule of twos comes in frequently here. Everyone starts with $4, and you get two actions. You can have up to two cards in your hand by default, and up to two cards on your field by default. And scoring, as it comes up later, can happen one of two ways. This is where things start getting a little interesting. If a given faction, so has these on the side are pieces, representative pieces, if one of the factions has a lead of four or more pieces compared to every other faction, People loyal to that faction will score points depending on who is most loyal to that faction. So if the Russians have a lead of four or more blocks on the board, uh, each Russian player, if there is more than one, uh, in order of loyalty, will get a certain number of points. The exact number you can find in the um, rules if you want to look at it, but it's something to the degree of like five, three, and one. Uh, for the scaling. Those aren't the real numbers, I don't think, but you get the idea. Uh, if no faction has a lead of four or more blocks on the board, then scoring will happen based on cylinders on the board and field. So let's look to see what happens uh, when we progress the game state and start putting these down on the field. How to read these cards? Uh, you will note there are four suits shown on the side here. Um, Purple, blue, yellow, and red. I think this is um, this is what political, economic, battle, and I don't know, royal, uh, noble, something like that. Um, they also have star values, and uh, we'll go over what exactly those mean later. Um, but generally, the idea is more stars is better. Um, cards in the market up here. Uh, have a little number above them. So on your first turn, you really can only take, the only actions you could take is picking up cards or picking up one card and playing a card. And you can find the list of actions in the rules and player aid if you wish. But the game does a pretty good job of showing you what your options are, but the problem is, is that there's a lot of options. So things in the zero column cost zero coins. Remember, we have a balance of four coins by default, one coin, two coin, three coin, four coin, etc. If the suit is on red, money prices for the market are doubled. Um, that'll come up later, perhaps. 
on the cards on the right side, we have the pieces that get placed when you play this card. So cylinders with a card below them are spies. And cylinders without a card under them are tribes. There are none on this market at the moment, which is actually kind of unusual. Usually you see a few, but that's all right. That's kind of the fun of the game is there's a deck with a lot of cards uh, and only some of the cards are used each game. There can also be colored blocks in here and some are uncolored. So ones on their side with camels are roads. These are put at the boundaries between regions on the board and ones with vertical rectangles are armies that get placed in regions on the board. <clears throat> Cards with a color down the middle and a faction icon are specific to a given faction. So if a non-Russian player were to pick up and play, um, well, at the play step, when you decide to finally play from your hand a card with a given loyalty on it, uh, it will change your faction loyalty to that faction. Um, one of the actions you can take is Betrayal, which is for $2, you can betray a faction that you have a spy card on, which is this cylinder on a card. And if you, if you assassinate a betray, assassinate, whatever you want to call it, a card with a stripe on the bottom for a faction, you will get um, faction credit for that faction and your loyalty will shift to that faction. So let's see a few of these actions play out. I'm going to pick up two cards. I could also pick up one card and uh, play one card, but I'm going to choose to pick up two cards because these are two pretty good cards. This is an economic two star and a intelligence two star. And the blue two star means that if it's on the board, we can hold two extra cards in our hand. We start at two, and that means we could hold up to four. Uh, the actions that cards let you take are listed here. This is tax, which lets you get money. This is build, which lets you build things on the board. And this is march, which lets you move pieces around. This all card, Alexander Burns, for the region Punjab, um, also has strange bedfellows for spy travel. You treat cards that share a region as adjacent. And we'll go over what that looks like later. So this player's turn is done. They've picked up two cards. And we're going to go through, and it's pretty usual to um, follow this pattern as you go through. Why did I pick this card instead of this card? This card is a two-star. This card is a one-star. And um, this player is going to go for a gambit to get lots of pieces on the board because we're given with an opportunity to put lots of roads and lots of armies at two and two each and remember a lead of four or more means that comes scoring time when a dominance check arrives here um this player might put afghan in the lead after we end our turn cards slide to the side and cards that were on the left side will fall off and cards that uh, are otherwise off the board are drawn from the deck and put on the right side. So now the five cost column, we see this is a tribe, which lets you put a cylinder on the board. Um, we'll go over the significance of that a little later. For now, we're just going to go through and we're going to pick up two cards with each player. This is a pretty usual first turn. Um, this player is a British player, so we're not really interested at the moment in picking up a Russian card, but not paying for Russian Patriots on the market, that is cards with a Russian loyalty, is pretty strong. Um, but we're going to pick up the $1 here, and we're going to pick up the do not pay for Herat cards on the market. Why was there a dollar there? We bought the card to the right of this card on the last player's turn, and that costs one monies. And when that money is put down, it gets put on the card before it, um, meaning that a future player could get that monies. So all players have taken a first turn. We come back around to Gray's turn, the Russian player, and we're going to look this is a Russian card uh, that's pretty good for us. That gives us Russian influence, um, which means that our loyalty to Russia is improved. 
Um, and so we're just gonna pick up one card. You just don't really need this. And we wanna actually start getting cards on the board. Now, if we look at the, there's also event cards on the market. And this one says riots in Punjab, remove all tribes and armies in Punjab. Um, or if we buy this card, so that's what happens if it falls off the side of the market. If we bought it instead, um, coalitions require only two or more blocks in order to be dominant rather than four. Um, I'd rather that not happen. Uh, this event card, so I'm gonna let I'm gonna probably let this try to let this fall off. Um, disregard for customs. All everyone ignores bribes until the next dominance check. We'll go over that later. Or you may choose to not pay bribes, which is quite good. But it's a little early in the game, and I'm not terribly concerned about that. So let's get a card on the board. Riots in Punjab means that we probably don't want to play our Punjab card, even though it doesn't put tribes or armies on the board, I suppose. But that lets us play any card here. I'm going to choose to play uh, this Persia card. Um, and it says play to the left or the right side. When you have no cards on the board, it doesn't matter. But the next card you play can go to the left or the right side of this card, uh, which has effects for movement of spies. So we played it, we get two roads. This symbol means we have to pay two coins if we ever discard this card. Um, and you can find the details for that later. Hopefully we'll never have to discard this card. And it means we probably wanna hang on to this Persia card as long as possible to avoid paying a fine. But these two roads are quite nice. We can get two little roads in, P in Persia, bordering Transcaspia and Herat notably far from Punjab, so they won't get removed. I guess this only removes tribes and armies, but beside the point. So we're going to end our turn there. Now we have six monies because um, we uh, picked up the cards with coins, as I recall. So we'll go back, go to blue. This is our Afghan player. Um, and... There's not really any cards here that I will want. The The card regions dictate on the top right here, dictate where you can place the blocks on the right side. And one extra thing is if you ever lose, say you took this cobble card and it put an army in cobble, if you lose um, all of your cobble cards uh, that you've played, if you don't have any cobble cards on the board, you lose everything you have in Kabul for, I believe it's tribes and armies. And that's called, uh, I think, Overthrow, and you can find that in the rules for details. Uh, now, we do have four monies. In fact, we, or sorry, we only have three monies because we bought a slightly more expensive card, but there is a purple card here, and that lets us put a tribe on the board. Control of a region is determined by who has the most armies slash tribes in a region. And having tribes on the board puts cylinders on the board, which, as you might recall, improves our stance for scoring if a faction isn't dominant. Furthermore, purple cards let you have, um, based on the number of stars for the purple card, that many more cards in play, because normally you only get two purple cards let you have more. So a one-star purple you could think of as a free card on the board, which is quite good. It gives you actions that you can take. So we're going to spend our, all of our money on that, and we are going to play this card. And it says to place a tribe in Herat. We'll do so. We get a blue token here indicating that we control Herat because we have the most tribes slash armies in that region, and we get to place an army as per the side of the card. I may take bonus actions. Whatever suit is active here, which in this case is purple, uh, you can take one of the actions off of the card, if you're able to, for free. So we could battle, um, or we could tax. Now, I just, if I battled, I could battle here, and I could destroy this road. Uh, you can just, you can remove opposing, oppon opposing faction pieces. Um, so if there was an Afghan road here, I wouldn't be able to destroy it, even if it was from another player. Um, but I can destroy Russian and British assets, or tribes that are owned by Russian or British loyal players. 
but I don't really need to do that at the moment. And I have one on the board, and Russia doesn't have a big lead. But I spent all my money, so I'm going to take the tax action. It says I can take one rupee from market cards or players. Um, players that have pieces, I believe it's pieces or, in, or cards in a, or pieces in a region that I control, I think is the criteria for taxing them. You can check that in the rules. But we can also just take things off of the board. Um, this card is going, I believe, is going to slide off the end. So I'm going to take this one coin from this Kandahar card because the Russian player is already gone. And most likely this card would appeal most to the British player. So I'm going to take the one coin off of it. Now I have one. End our turn. Discard any cards in the leftmost column if they're event cards. Do that. Right in Punjab. Nothing happens. Now we're looking at Tan. Um, now we have five coins, which is a pretty healthy amount. There's a few cards on the board that are useful. In particular, there is a purple card here that um, is incidentally Afghan. Now, I don't actually have any British specific cards. So if I wanted a purple card, I could just take this and it would switch my loyalty to Afghan, like so. So I spend money, it gets laid on all the cards leading up to that card. And now when I play this card, um, oh, uh oh, I have to pay a bribe. Why is that? Well, I'm playing a Herat card and blue, uh, our Afghani player, has control of Herat because they have the most tribes or armies there. And if this is the case and you try to play a card or activate a card in a region controlled by another player, by dominance like this, then you have to pay them a bribe. And this is unfortunate for us because uh, we only have one dollar left. So maybe we hold off on that. How do we solve this problem in Herat? Well, instead of doing that, we could play this Herat card, which lets us put three pieces down on the board. And maybe we just abandon this card altogether, and we just accept that we're going to deny it from the Afghan player. But maybe we'll hold on to it. If we put, play this card, the roads and armies we put down will be British. And if we played this card later, then we would be Afghan and the British pieces wouldn't help us anymore. So we're going to suck it up, play this card, pay the one bribe, and put an army here. Now, notably, um, oh, and this symbol changes the active suit. Notably, with equal number of tribes, blue loses control of this region and now we'd be free to play this Herat card later. We're Afghan now so they can't attack our tribe in this region and we're Afghan because this is a Afghan aligned card. We have no more actions, we'll hit end turn and it'll roll over to gray. The Russian player. Now the Russian player has a pretty obvious setup here for what is the best option. Three coins and a Patriot, quite good. We'll take that. And let's see, something's brewing in Herat. We don't have any cards for Herat, but we have cards for Transcaspia and we have roads in Persia. We have an economic card and economics, the favored suit that we can tax. We could lead with that and maybe we'd be able to stock up some money. So we'll take up to two rupees from the market and we'll take these two since there's no British player anymore. Uh, that player switched over to Afghan. I'm not going to worry about leaving money on the British thing here since that'd be kind of a waste if someone flip-flopped back to British again. But maybe they will. Who knows? Now what do we do here. Well, we could play this card and try to improve our posture for dominance of the region. We could play this card and put more cylinders on the board 
for non-dominant scoring. Given that there's two cylinders on the board, and we already have a slight one block dominance lead, I am going to start playing this card to establish greater dominance in the region. And it's not like they can attack us in Transcaspia quite yet, so we're going to hold on to that. That's all of our actions. We go back to blue. Can take two actions. And blue still has this card to play. Um, so we'll do Civic Improvements. Play it here. After you take the build action, place one additional block on a legal space. Um, we're not going to take a build action just yet, but we get a road, put a road, actually, put a road here, since there's an army here, and a road here. Switch the favored suit to political, and we can take one more action. Maybe there's a card we want on the market. Um, your political cards cannot be the targets for the betray action. That's pretty good, um, but that takes up a board slot. And we kind of want to mess with the Russians' board dominance a bit more. So maybe we do an attack. And an attack in this region is based on the number of armies, so I can remove up to one tribe, robe, roads, or armies from Herat. And I will remove the Russian road. I'm just going to keep going through here until we get to a dominance check, and then I'll explain the scoring as after we go. When you play a spy, you can place a spy on a court in Punjab. This is the only Punjab card, so it has to go here. This counts towards your cylinders for a non-dominant faction scoring check. This is a three-star blue card that lets us put three cylinders on the board. This is quite good. Uh, it also says your spies cannot be removed in battles with other spies. So uh, you saw me use the battle action earlier on the board, but if you have a spy, on the same place as another spy, you can attack them as well using the battle action. And we'll just try to get this out on the board because green is trying pretty hard to usurp our board dominance. And we might as well put cylinders on the board. I can take a uh, bonus action because blue is the favored suit. I'll take movement and you'll see our spies move over here, because this is how it moves is side to side across the tableau. So I could either move here on my board or here on my neighbor's board. And I'll spread my spies out a little bit. Just for uh, just for good goals, you know? Our Afghan player is going to continue trying to push for dominance. Let's be on the winning side of a dominance check. This puts them in a pretty strong lead over the Russian player. And let's see. We have some money, not a lot of money. The market isn't amazing at the moment for our Afghan player. Who really needs to worry about getting more influence than the other Afghan player inside the Afghan faction. Better loyalty, you should say. So we can buy these gems, which improve our loyalty. So we want a gem card. This is a British gem card, which would change our allegiance. So we don't want that. And I don't really want to have to give up. I only, I now you only get two cards normally. With a purple start, let's see, you have three. So playing another card onto the board will mean discarding one of these cards. Um, but I want a gem, so I'll take it. And it costs me my monies. It puts the monies on the board in the preceding cards. And I am out of actions. 
Strength Hand may take two actions. I don't have any cards in our hand. Don't really have anything that we can do here. There's no one to attack. And we don't have any money to uh, get more loyalty. So we can also just pick up cards. And picking up a card doesn't change our loyalty, only if we play it. So I can take those two cards just to get the money with no intention of playing the British card. And blue is the favorite suit, so I get a bonus action, which I will use to buy a loyalty and spend two money to put another cylinder on the board in these gifts. This counts towards our cylinders for cylinder scoring and counts towards faction-specific scoring. Aha! Now we have a dominance check on the market. All right, what do we have here? So we have the Russian player. A Russian player has enough money to buy the Dominus check and resolve it immediately, but they only want to do that if they can get rid of this four block lead from the Afghan player and divert scoring to the Russian player. Let's see what we can do. So we can do an attack in Transcaspia and we could remove these two blocks. This shortens the lead from the Afghan faction to our faction and makes no faction dominant on the board. This means we would move to cylinder scoring. We can see on the side here um, what cylinder counts every player is at. And we see that gray and tan are at the same counts. Yeah, I know there's tiebreaker criteria and I can't remember them off the top of my head, but um, Suffice to say that we one of we we one of gray or tan will score the max points. I don't think both of us do, but let's find out because we can just undo this. Let's buy the dominance check. Ah, both of us get the points, and that's an acceptable outcome. One of the players is left behind, and gray and tan stay at the same point. But most importantly, this doesn't give the Afghan players any chance to leave gray in the dust and the dominance check is resolved. We can take a movement and maybe try to do something sneaky like put a spy on this purple card and take it off of the board, which would be quite damaging. So we do that. The Persia card can move and to the side, it means it wraps around all the way to here. And we can move this also onto the purple piece down here for the other player positioning ourselves to use the Betray action, which I don't actually have any cards to do, uh, but perhaps in the future use the Betray action to control these cards, or at least force them to pray bribes and spies around them to use the actions on those cards. And turn, no faction was dominant. If a faction was dominant, faction pieces, uh, I think armies and roads get removed off of the board. I think tribes stay. Uh, otherwise, Everything stays on the board, and we don't get a reset. And you just keep playing. Uh, you'll note there are three dominance cards showed here, shown here. There are 30 cards left in the deck. And play continues as normal until all the dominance checks are resolved. If there are ever two dominance checks on the board at the same time, it's resolved immediately, and both are removed from the board. So you can get an early game end or get through two dominance checks really quickly that way too. I hope this was helpful and good luck in Afghanistan.